So why do we refer to God as he? I don't think they even knew that word when they, <laughs> when they decided to refer to him as he. Very simple reason is we're in a relationship with God. So if God is a she, then we, be, we become the he. And we would rather he be the he and we be the she. So it's not like he is really a, a male or a female. In our relationship with him, since he started the relationship, we are responding. So we take the feminine role, we give him the masculine role. There were religions that believed in a female God. Do you know any, any of them today? No, because they killed themselves. <laughs> it's much better for us to be feminine and let God be masculine. Adam was male and female, like two sides of a coin. And then God separated them. So you can say the female came from the male, or you can say the male came from the female. They were one person and they became two. Now, if, if, if someone were to ask me, what is a woman? Dangerous question these days. <laughs> The female experience or the female psyche is a hunger for life, looking for something more that is missing. The masculine mentality is the desire to provide what is missing. That's why a man and a woman can make a very good marriage together. If they both did the same thing, they would constantly be clashing. So the, the hunger for life and the responsibility to life, that's male and female. Yin and yang in Chinese. So how does it begin? First, first there's a male and then there's female, or first there's female and then there's male? First, there's female, because otherwise nobody's going to be born. <laughs> so even men are born to mothers. So first there's female, then there's male. So all of life begins with a hunger for life. That's female. When there's a hunger for life, then you got to do something about it. That's male. Think about your parents. Does that fit? Your mother wants something, your father got to get it. <laughs> Isn't that how it works? <laughs> and if your mother never wanted anything, your father would never do anything. <laughs> that true too? So women actually make men be men. Because they have a hunger for life. So the man responds and provides. <clears throat> so we shouldn't be confused about what's a woman. Um, Eve ate from the tree of knowledge and she shouldn't have, right? And so she was punished. Everybody is punished. We're all suffering because of that. Like original sin. So we're all dying because of it, even today. Nasty story. Adam and Eve were such perfect creatures. It's not possible that they disobeyed God. It's just not possible. They had no bad influences. They had no traumas. Why would they disobey God? For a fruit? A fig? Not believable. Not at all believable. So here's, here's the, the correct version. Right? God created Adam and Eve. They didn't even have a birth trauma. And he puts them in the Garden of Eden, and he says to them, go down to the lowest world and fix it for me. So here they are in the Garden of Eden, and they're looking around and like, what is there to fix? 
It's the Garden of Eden. Everything's perfect. There's nothing to fix. But then there was that tree. And God said, oh, that tree, oh, that's, that's bad. That's bad. I said, okay, so let's fix it. And God says, no, don't eat it. <laughs> so they were completely puzzled. What's our job? Everything's good except one tree and we're not supposed to eat it. We just sit here and watch it grow. What are we fixing? They realized that God said, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, don't eat from it, for the day you do eat from it, you'll die. And they said, the day we do eat from it? I thought, we're not supposed to eat from it. It sounded like a mixed message. Don't eat from it, the day you eat from it, not if. They said, you know, God is giving us a choice here. Don't eat from it and stay in the Garden of Eden, or eat from it and go into the world of mortality, where people die. They thought about it seriously, and they decided that they should eat from it. Why? Because in the Garden of Eden, God takes care of you, but you can't do anything for God. So God really wants us to go down to the world of mortality, where there's a lot of fixing and cleaning up to do. That's our job. So Adam said, but why wouldn't God put us there if he wants us there? And Eve said, because he wants us to volunteer. He doesn't want us to complain that you forced us. We always have to volunteer to serve. Otherwise, it's slavery, not service. So Adam said, you know, you're, you're, you're right. And they ate. God comes to Adam and says, you ate from the tree I told you not to eat from? And what did Adam say? You know the story? Adam said, it's her fault. Not her fault. God was saying, how did you know that I meant for you to eat it? Because that was really insightful. How did you know? He said, I didn't know. She knew. God said, that is wonderful. Now let me tell you about the challenge of that world out there. Not only do you die, you have to work hard to make a living. There's pain in childbirth. You have enemies. The snake will try to kill you. You'll try to kill it. It's a messy world. But thank you for volunteering to fix it. So Eve is not the villain. It's been 3,334 years that we've been calling her the villain. She's actually the hero. The reason we are here in this messed up world is because she volunteered for herself and her children forever to fix up the world so that God can be comfortable with his creation. And that's what we've been doing for 3,000 years. Now the question is, is the world any better than it was? 3,000 years ago? Much better. <laughs> we've come a long way. And just in the last 30, 40 years, we've come a long way. There is much less starvation in the world. There are very few wars going on, which is unusual. Even this war, Russia and, and, and Ukraine, caught everybody by surprise. Like, I thought we were done with that already. Who fights wars anymore? What For what? We have become a lot better. Just need a little more goodness, and the world can be a really, really good place. If we were not selfish, the world would be perfect. Like, Russia goes to war against Ukraine. For what? For what? 
Russia is rich. Russia, Russia is powerful. What, what do they need Ukraine for? Ego? Just ego? So imagine people stop being so selfish. Russia could be fixing the whole world. Could be the source of all sorts of good stuff. Instead, they choose to fight. For what? So it's, it's not really a lot that needs to change. Just a little attitude, and we have a perfect world. If we weren't selfish, we could cure every disease. If we weren't selfish, we wouldn't have to use um, oil or coal. We would use sunlight. But the oil companies are greedy and they don't want sunlight. So all we really need is a little more kindness and we can make this world perfect. Yes, a Jew is Jewish because God created us Jewish. Not because we believe in it, not because we want it, not because we like it. Now, being born Jewish, God gives us a certain role in history, which we call Judaism. I don't know why, but that's what it's called. <laughs> so, we have Judaism, which is basically the function of the Jewish people. So you can say Judaism is a family, not Judaism. Jews are a family. Judaism is the purpose for which this family was created. How does one become a Jew if you're not born Jewish? When a person decides to convert to Judaism, they actually are transformed. It's not membership in a religion. You literally become a Jew. Here's a good example. Uh, let's say somebody converts, becomes a Jew. On Passover, he's going to sit down or she's going to sit down at a Seder and she is going to thank God for taking her ancestors out of Egypt. Funny thing is, she's Egyptian. <laughs> so imagine an Egyptian converts to Judaism and then thanks God for taking her ancestors out of Egypt. They were not her ancestors. Or Hanukkah comes around and she makes a blessing saying, thank you for performing miracles for my ancestors back in those days. Were they your ancestors? That is the miracle of conversion. When you convert, you literally are given a new soul, which is Jewish, whose ancestors were in Egypt, whose ancestors were saved in the times of Hanukkah and the times of Purim. So literally you become a new being, which is what conversion means. If it's just membership in a synagogue, that's not a conversion, that's a membership. So a, a person who converts to Judaism literally becomes a member of the family, not just not just a membership. So yes, you can say being a Jew is a family, being a Jew is a race, a people, a certain creation within the creation. So God didn't choose Jews, God created Jews, like everything else. If he wants something, he creates it. But then he took the Jews whom he created and gave them a mission. That's what they were chosen for. But you're not Jewish because you're chosen. You were chosen because you're Jewish. Chosen for what? To tell the world about God. So we really need to know. And that's why coming here to find out more is really a good idea. But if Judaism is a family, then why? Are there, how can it be differences? Some people are reformed, some people are orthodox. How does that work? Nobody's reform and nobody is orthodox. You're Jewish. And as a Jew, you have a certain relationship with God, a certain commitment to, to the mission. And either you do a lot or you do a little, but that's what it's all about. Saying I'm orthodox is an, 
It's an unbelievable claim. Saying you're orthodox means I keep all the commandments. Mm, I doubt it. There are 613. I don't think you're keeping all. Saying reform means I don't have to keep them all. Uh, that's not up to you to decide. So reform, conservative, orthodox, no, nobody is born orthodox. Nobody is born reform. We're born Jewish and we do our best. That's why you're here. Even though you're reform and we are orthodox. No, we're not orthodox because we're not religious at all. We're not practicing a religion. We're simply enjoying our Jewish role. So if I can help you enjoy it a little more, why not? You're just as Jewish as I am. And you're just as necessary for the mission. So join us in the mission. Learn about God and tell the world. Because people are confused. Very confused. And if we can do something to help, that would be really big. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there's a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. I want to invite you to join us as VIPs, partners, in our work, and join us also for uh, a personal chat with other members of the VIP club. We talk about many things. There's an opportunity to ask, to respond, to make a comment, to meet the other supporters. And together, we can really make a difference in Jewish life and in life in general. So join us. It's goodtoknow.org. Log in, call, make contact, and join us with the VIPs.